My name is Darren Tiwa. I am a senior here at Mississippi. I am a member of the Hopi tribe. And this semester, I signed up for the Swarmathon competition. Hello, my name is Brian Doney. I'm part of the Height Network Management Program at Mississippi. Um, I'm from Navajo, and I'm from Arizona. Uh, my name is Bradley Kay, and I'm from Arizona, Burnt Corn, Arizona, specifically, and I'm in the pre-engineering program. The goals of the competition are to simulate autonomous rovers to collect resources prior to having the first man land on Mars, so they will have resources ready and available for them. This competition is from UNM, sponsored by NASA, and this is the first year of the competition. And our school was selected to complete in the physical competition, which is going to be held at Kennedy. Right now, our swarmies have an Intel Nook for the brain to run the whole rover. There is a camera attached in front to detect the April tags. Also in the front, we've got three, three um, ultrasound detectors for collision avoidance. The names of our swarmies are Chappie, Eva, and Wally. The sensors on them as well have GPS, IMU, and compass modules. Our school was one of, well, actually the only school to go to UNM and build our own swarmies. We, with that, we got a better understanding of how our swarmies work. We got to see the construction and how each part is put together. So when we had some issues throughout the competition, we were able to fix it, take it apart with the understanding of how to put it back together again. And then since this being a first time competition, we collaborated a lot with UNM and UNM actually came over to our school to help, well, for us to help them with the, a better understanding with the code. And they used our arena to test their rovers, which was a failed, te failed test in the beginning. But as things got better, and we were able to improve on the code and up, help UNM update their codes. Uh, we built the full-scale arena area for testing the swarmies for the competition, and we found a lot of problems with the with the way with the sensors and everything else. We found a lot of problems, uh, which is uh, the swarmies don't behave like they do in gazebo and work too well in the simulation. Uh, with the challenges, uh, we faced a lot, uh, especially with uh, the swarmies are not, instruments aren't uh, precise. Uh, it gave us a lot of different readings, like the wheel odometry wasn't accurate for over a long distance, and the GPS error margin was too big, uh, basically uh, 10 meters. With the compass, it, it doesn't really display the true heading. Uh, the ultrasonic sensors will uh, interfere with each other. Basically, all the sensors were not accurate uh, when we first got them. Uh, with all the challenges, and we've seen a lot of uh, rewarding part of it too, quite a bit uh, learning from each of them, even the uh, programming. It always didn't really transfer to the real world from uh, Accent uh, the simulation, and yeah, that's basically what we found out. Some of the sensors weren't out of the box ready. Some of them took calibrations and had a bunch of errors in them. Our GPS unit, the margin of error was two to five meters off, so we could say our rover was there, but it was two meters left or to the right. Also, the um, wheel, the wheel odometry was off. Sometimes they wouldn't find their way back to home the home tag and sometimes they just get completely lost in the arena. So basically the sensors are not accurate out of the box. We can't just turn them on and expect good results in the beginning. In the beginning we um, tested many search patterns. Um, I think in the beginning we had a half circle design so it would travel from one point and start circling around the uh, home base. But as we soon figured, uh, we tested it in a virtual gazebo. But after a while, we, when we tested it out in the physical world, uh, we found out it was nearly impossible because of error cap errors and everything. Um, so we decided on something more simpler, so it would not 
you can set it on the spoke design? Uh, we chose a, we decided on the spoke pattern because uh, it was really too slow uh, moving throughout the whole field for the swarmies. And basically, uh, we had to kept, keep everything close to home, basically what we had to do, so we don't have to lose our, rope, our, our swarmies. Because uh, the pattern is uh, pretty useful in a small radius. Uh, so for every trip out, uh, it would travel out three meters and come back. This would prevent from becoming lost or in recalibrating every turn. And once done with a uh, small radius of three meters, we decided to have them do it again, but at six meters this time. There were a lot of challenges during this competition, but it was important to see the end result. Well, in conclusion, we had a lot of challenges and a lot of good results that came out of this. We learned a lot more about Ross and how Ross is run. Pretty much how our codes were written in different codes and how Ross got to help us apply all of that to our swarmy. Also, our, our team will be tra traveling to Florida at the Kennedy Space Center for the physical competition. And we're really confident in our swarmies and our search pattern and our codes because of our preliminary findings and how our codes run and how we were able to test them out in the physical conditions.